my cousin got here about five minutes ago. She's got this 09 RDX and she's complaining that whenever she buys gas and then goes to start it, it won't start. I don't think it's a gas pump problem. I think it's the fact that the car has been off for like five minutes and she normally doesn't stop for that amount of time. So we're gonna see what happens. Hmm, starts right up. It seems to be running fine. I gotta do a oil change. So I'm gonna do a valve adjustment too. I'll take it to the Honda dealer. This thing's quick. I'll take it to the Honda dealer and then see how it does when I shut it off and restart it. It's about five minutes later, so I'll see if it starts. Hmm, starts right up. My cousin recently bought this 2009 Acura RDX. It's got the 2.3 liter turbo, super handling all wheel drive. She's complaining that it gets terrible gas mileage. Like she says it gets 11 miles per gallon. I don't know if I believe her, but that's what she says. And she also said that two times now within the past month that she's had the car, it hasn't started. She'll turn the key and just cranks and cranks and cranks. And this is after it's been off for a few minutes. Like if she goes to the gas station or runs into the store, I think it needs a valve adjustment. That's what happened to my element when that needed a valve adjustment. The recommended service for this car says only adjust the valves if they're noisy. Now that's weird because it's basically the same as a 2.4 that's in the elements and you have to do that every 110,000. So today I'm going to attempt to adjust the valves on this thing. I have new spark plugs and a new valve cover gasket I'll also install. Because of the intercooler here, it's going to be more of a pain, so I might as well do the spark plugs while I'm at it. There are no videos on a valve adjustment for this car anywhere that I can find. Not even like a recommended service procedure on how to do it. So I guess this is going to be the video. Maybe I'll help somebody that's having the same problem. This RDX has about 227,000 kilometers, which is around 140,000 miles. So I think it's time for a valve adjustment. So step one is to turn these four plastic screws vertical and that should remove this plastic cover over the intercooler. Now I have a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts to loosen. I'll start up here with these two hose clamps. I will get this bolt. This bolt in the back, I had to use a swivel. I'll take this bolt off. There's another bolt down there. I'm going to loosen the top bolt on that clamp. Now I'm going to take off this hose, this hose, this hose, this hose, and this connector. I'll do the connector first. I think I'm ready to pull the intercooler off. All of the hose clamps are loose. These are disconnected and all of the bolts are off. I'm going to break the seal loose on this hose back here. There we go. Intercooler is off. So now that the intercooler is off, the process should be pretty similar to the elements that I've done. These are gonna be, oh, I'm worried about that. If I can't get that off, I don't know, we might not be doing this. It's rusty. So basically I'll have to take this off. Uh, this might just pop off. I'll start by trying to get these four 10 millimeter bolts. I hit those two back bolts with PB blaster just to get the rust off the heads. And I'm gonna to try to scrape them clean with this. Oh, well, this one's actually loosening. What's happening is the head of this bolt is so rusty. Even with my six point socket it's just stripping the top of the bolt 
I found this 3 8 that I'll probably never use. And I have like a million of them. I'm gonna try to hammer this on and maybe that'll be enough where I can get enough grip to break it free. Yes, it actually works. Next up, I'm gonna remove these four 10 millimeter bolts that hold on the coil packs. And I'll also take this bolt off and this hose clamp and that bolt and probably this bolt too. There's a lot of rust in here and I'm worried about it going down the spark plug tubes. So I'm gonna blow that out first. Now we'll disconnect the coil packs and pull them out. It's probably a good idea to disconnect the battery. I had to take this connector off to get the plastic piece off because I'll need the space to check the clearance on these intake valves. Next, I will take the spark plugs out. Here's the spark plug wrench I'll use. It's a 5 8 and it has a rubber insert in there. So what happens when you reach down, if you push hard, it'll hold the spark plug so you can pull it up out of the motor. Here's the cylinder number one spark plug. It really doesn't look that bad. But the way it's burnt like that, it's probably original. Now, even if you're not changing the spark plugs when you're doing the valve adjustment, you'll want to take them out because you're going to have to turn the motor and you don't want any compression on there. It might not turn. Now I will take off these three bolts. And it looks like there's just one here and one here, those are all 10 millimeter. Peel some of this loose paint off so it doesn't fall in the motor. I'm pulling these off. If they come off, if not, I'll get them later. I decided I'm not going to follow this down and unplug all these wires. I have to get to like one way down there and I'm not doing that. So I'm just going to push this up out of the way when I lift the cover off. I'm probably going to get a pry bar or a screwdriver and put it in a crack here to start separating it and then it should come off. You know what? There's one more bolt here I forgot to take off. No wonder it's not coming. I don't know how I missed this. I was having trouble pulling this back enough. So I'm hoping if I remove this bolt, I can move this hose back and then pull the valve cover off. Alrighty, there's no way I'm getting the valve cover off without disconnecting the five or six plugs that this wiring harness goes to behind and on the side and below the motor. So unfortunately I have to unplug all those and I just say unfortunately because like I can't even fit my hand down here. How am I supposed to unplug those? I might have to jack it up, take the tire off, I'm not sure yet but I'm not looking forward to it. And I'm worried that the harnesses are gonna break 
I'm trying to pull to get him loose. So uh, I guess that's my only option. I made it this far. Might as well keep going. I got these two off. Now I'm trying to get this green connector off. It's like a zip tie with the plug on the other end. But there's no room to work. And the way that it's positioned, you can't fit pliers. Well, you can fit pliers down there, but it's like 90 degrees turned the wrong way. So I might just have to rip it off. I got the green clip off. Now I'm gonna undo this plug right here. I got this one off by holding the flashlight with my teeth, pushing with the screwdriver in my, in my left hand and reaching around the back side with my right hand and unclipping it. Now I think there's some that I have to get to from the bottom. I think this is one of them that goes up to the harness. I got this one off. Now I gotta pull that out. This clip right above the bottom while you're broke. I think the next one is probably right there. Here's a pretty good view from underneath. We have a plug here, a plug right here, and then one more right here. So it's gonna be hard for me to film and take these off. I'll just show you once they're off. That wire clip is unhooked. That connector's unplugged. I just pushed and it slid out. Um, that one's unplugged. I got that one from the top. This one here is done. So now I'll just go back to the top and fish everything out. Here's what this looks like opened up. I'm gonna wash my hands, put some gloves on. I have to also lower the car down. It's jacked up now on jack stands and it's too high. It's not gonna be comfortable for me to do the adjustment. I started working on this at 10 o'clock this morning. It's now after 5 p.m. I also did leave for a couple hours to help somebody else. But now I gotta lower the car and get to adjusting. I was looking up on the hood for the valve clearances. On my element, it's on that sticker, but it's not listed anywhere. So I found online in one of the RDX service manuals what it is, and I just wrote it on here for future. Exhaust, which is the back row, 0.011 to 013 inches, and the intake 0.008 to 0.010 inches. I know from experience, Honda intake valves always get loose and the exhaust always get tight. Usually the intake doesn't even move, so hopefully I won't have to do any adjusting there. So the intake, I'm gonna tighten it. I have a 008 feeler gauge I'll use for the intake and exhaust I'll use the 0 0.013 because it'll get tight over time. So the process, I'll start intake cylinder one, but this lobe has to be top dead center. So how I'm gonna rotate it is I have this 19 millimeter wrench and I'm just gonna turn it. I already turned it a little bit and then the hose gets in the way. So you'll see when I turn it, the motor turns also. So I'm just gonna do that until this lobe gets to top dead center. I got a different wrench, this one's longer, and the angle on the end here isn't as drastic. So it's much easier to spin this now. And make sure you're turning it the same direction as me. So now we have the intake side I'll do first. That was the 0 0.008. So I take my feeler gauge. I'll show you in a minute. And slide it 
right in here. This is the intake side. You want to put your feeler gauge right through here. And there should just be like minimal drag, which is what this is right now. The intake is usually good on these K series and that's it's perfect just like that there is drag it's touching but you can still slide it easily then we'll go over to intake valve number two and it's the same there's just like the slightest amount of drag and that's what you want so intake number one is good I'm not even going to adjust it. I'm not even going to loosen the jam nuts or anything. Leave it alone. Now I will move on to number three because it's only a quarter turn and I'm not really worried about the intakes. So here's a good hint, a good trick that I learned with the element valve adjustments. I'm going to do number three now. So this lobe is top dead center. If you feel that little bit of play is what you want, on the exhaust side, two of my elements, I think, maybe just one, they wouldn't even move. And that's how I knew before I even put the feeler gauge in that they were really tight. And that's what was causing it to stall and not start. So I'm just going to check number three and then um, whatever one comes up next, two and four. And then once those are all good, I'll verify. I will switch to the exhaust where I'm guessing there's a problem. I kind of hope there's a problem so I can fix it. And then it won't have any more stalling problems and it'll get better gas mileage. Number three intake is good. Number four is good. And number two is good. Now we shall move on to the exhaust. I'll start with number three because that's going to be top dead center next. Now I'm going to check number three exhaust. I've got my 0 0.013 inch feeler gauge. This is a pain to get to at a weird angle so I can feel the play which is good it's not like super tight but it's just like because of the weird angle here I can't get the feeler gauge to slide in I'm wondering if they're too tight I think number three is too tight because I can't fit this feeler gauge I'm going to try with number one it's closer it'll be easier to work with so right now I'm just going to spin the motor so number one exhaust comes up. This one moves a little bit, but I can tell it's tight. I can feel it moving. I can't get the 0.013 in. I'm going to try a 0.011. I don't have a 0.011, but I have a 012. I'll give that a try quick. I can't get the 0.12 in either. So what I'm gonna do is go back to the 0.13, get my 10 millimeter wrench, flathead screwdriver, and loosen these up a little bit. There's a couple different ways you can do a valve adjustment on a Honda. One is a 10 millimeter wrench and a flathead screwdriver. The other option is to buy this tool off Amazon specifically made for adjusting valves and Hondas. So what you do is you put this over the jam nut. You can hold the screw in place, twist to loosen the jam nut, twist the screwdriver, tighten the jam nut. Personally, I hate this tool. I tried using it a couple times and it's real hard to like figure out what's happening. You can't see the screw. So I prefer the screwdriver and wrench method. I'll demonstrate here how you would do it. I'm not adjusting the fronts. This is just for demonstration. You would do this. And then something like this. I don't know. It drives me crazy. 
I bought it. It was a waste of money, personally. So if it, I think it works better on the V6s because you're at a really weird angle in the back and you need this tool for a V6. But for this K24, screwdriver and a wrench work much better, I think. I'll start with this one. This can be a pain to break loose. Oh, I got it. So you can see here, I loosened the jab nut, but the screw stayed still. And then what I'm gonna do, so now I put my screwdriver in, turn it a little bit to the left, release, because I don't want to be pushing this down when I use the feeler gauge. So I turn it a bit, take the screwdriver off, It's still too tight. Now it fits, but it's a little loose. So I'm gonna tighten it just a bit. You just wanna get it just right. So the feeler gauge slides, but there's minimal drag. I think that's perfect right there. Now what I'll do is put this back on, hold the screw right where it was, and tighten the jam nut. And then you're gonna wanna check it. That's good, it still fits in and it has minimal drag. Now I'll move on to the next one. Same cylinder one, but just the other side. Yeah, that's too tight. So now I'm gonna be doing this one here. I already tried with the 0.13, it doesn't fit. So I do need to loosen a bit. This is very tight. So I'm gonna try this tool that I hate. It worked. All right, I take it back what I said. Got that loose for me. I guess I could have just used like a wrench with an extension. Oh well. Okay, so I cracked that free. Turn it about a fifth of a turn. I turned it about a quarter to a fifth of a turn and it's still too tight so I'm going to go a little bit more. It kind of fits now but it's really tight so I'll go a little bit more.
Now it fits right in and it slides back and forth. That's exactly what I want. And that ended up being a half a turn on the screw because I looked at where the, where the head was. So that's what I want. I will take this feeler gauge out. All I'm gonna do with the screwdriver is hold that screw from spinning and then tighten the nut. I can definitely tell this is a lot looser, so that's good. We don't want these to be tight or else a valve will burn. And once you burn a valve on these motors, it's cheaper just to put a new motor in. So now that that's tight, feeler gauge fits in. It's got just the slightest amount of drag, which is what we want. And that's perfect. On to the next cylinder, whichever one comes up. I think it'll be number three next. I'm not gonna film it. I'll just tell you what they were because the video is already getting long. All right, so the valve adjustment's done. I double checked it. I'm going to change the valve cover gasket. I got a new one at the Honda dealer. Here's the part number. It's the same part number and part as the K24 in the elements, cord, CRV. New valve cover gasket is in. It's much more flexible than the old one. The next step, you're going to use Honda Bond, not anything else. Honda bond only, and you're going to put a dab right there and right there, just a very small amount. I've done like four or five with this tube and the end is hardened, but it, I was squeezing so hard a hole punctured here, so I'll just use this that comes out. Honda Bond has been installed right there and right there. Now I am ready to put the valve cover back on. There she goes. All right, it's back in. The spark plug gasket thing snapped into place so it's sitting down tight. Next step, I will get all these back plugged in, hopefully in the right spots. It's the next day now. I was working on this thing till about nine o'clock last night and I just had enough. Last night I got the bottom three plugs clipped back in at the end of this wiring harness. But now the car's still jacked up and it's too high to work on comfortably and reach in the back. So I'm gonna put the tire back on and then drop it down. Put the three or the four plugs back up behind the motor, tighten the valve cover down, put the spark plugs in, and then I'll just get back to putting everything else together. I got the tire on. The two connectors back there and the one right there the, on the side plugged in. Now I will tighten down the valve cover. I put all one, two, three, four, five, six nuts back on to hold the valve cover down. Next I'm going to put on the oil fill cap and the dipstick just so nothing falls in. I'll throw this hose on. 
The next thing I'm going to put in the new spark plugs. You need to use NGK SILKR8A S. Four of them because it's a four cylinder. I got these at Advance Auto. They were like $19 a piece or so. The same way I took the old spark plugs out, I'm going to use this spark plug socket. Once it's snugged up, I'm just going to give it a quarter turn. Not even that much. Now that the spark plugs are in, I'm going to put the coil packs in and tighten those down. Next, I'll put this on. It goes in the corner to hold this. Next, I will put this cover back on. So now I'm gonna bolt up this, this to here, and then uh, this bolt is for the side because I took this off. Next, I will put this cover back on, which goes here, and then I'll plug in that connector to here. So now the cover's back on. This is plugged in. I'm going to throw this back on here. Tighten the bottom clamp down and then I'll be ready to put the intercooler back on. So now that this is on, I'm going to start hooking up these hoses, wire connectors, and then bolt the intercooler back on with the four bolts. I noticed the coolant was low, so I'm gonna top off the reservoir. Now I just put this on. Now I'll hook the battery back up. Okay, fingers crossed that it starts. So driving around the block, all these lights come on. I have a feeling I forgot to plug in the connector somewhere because there was a lot of them. So I'll get it back home and run the code. I'm gonna shut it and then turn it back on and hopefully only the check engine light will be on. Yep. So now I'll plug the scanner in and see. The code is this VTC oil control solenoid valve. I'm going to look that up and see which plug it is. According to the internet, this blue plug is the problem. That's the one that the engine light came on for. So, what I think I'm going to do is try to push it in more, if not disconnect it plug it in again and i'm just praying that like the wiring by where i was bending it didn't break because that would not be good here is the problem the wire broke out of this connector it's a couple days later i got the pigtail fixed drove it around it was fine the engine light never came back on i shut it off Went to start it and it was like the battery was almost dead. So now the car's been off for a couple minutes and I'll start it and see what happens. Oh, look at that. It's actually not starting. I wonder if it's the starter. I wonder if the battery's dead or the starter's going. But well, there, it just started fine. Hmm. This concludes the video for the valve adjustment on this 2009 RBX. It should work like 2007 to 2012, I believe. The biggest part about Honda ownership is people forget to adjust their valves. All of the exhaust valves were tight, as I thought. Intake was fine. That Honda tool this tool that I said I hated when I do the element valve adjustments, it worked out great on this car because of the turbo and the exhaust is different in the back of the motor. I actually didn't need this tool. So if you have an element, you don't need this. If you have an RDX, 
You do need it. Or I think the V6 is all needed because it's a weird angle. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And hope this helps you.